So now let's talk about venous bleeding. Venous bleeding is normally characterized by dark red oozing blood, not bright red spurting blood like arterial. In this case, most of the time, venous bleeding stops on its own in four to six minutes if you did nothing. But we can easily control it with direct pressure and then a bandage and then decide whether or not the person needs to go in by ambulance or whether they're stable enough that they can actually go in by private automobile or someone drive them in. I always encourage driving them in, even if you do take them in by uh, another coworker or someone else by their own vehicle, because if they maybe have a hard time seeing their own blood, maybe they, you know, for whatever reason, they have kind of a psychogenic shock thing going on, not a true hypovolemic shock, then it's always good that they're a passenger. Plus it might hurt, you just never know, okay? So it's always a good idea to have somebody drive them in or have an ambulance bring him in. He obviously lacerated the tip of his finger. He was holding direct pressure on it with just his thumb, but it, it smiles at me. I, in other words, I can look at the cut, and when he opened up his finger, it kind of did this fish mouth opening. That means that it was a full thickness cut and is probably gonna need some stitches. If it didn't, if it stayed together when he showed me and it was just kind of oozing, that might be okay to bandage and heal on its own after it's cleaned and we use a triple antibiotic ointment to, to be sure to combat the possible bacteria. There's also the concept that if this person has not had a tetanus shot in a while, it's important that they find out what their records are and if they need a booster, they might get that because the material was dirty. And so I'm just gonna get this four by four. I see that the wound is right there. I apply direct pressure over the fingertip. There's a blood because he's been holding it for a while and a little bit of blood goes a long, long ways. So what looks like a massive amount of blood might just be that the red blood cells have smeared around, dripped, and don't be distracted by that. But you might take another bandage and kind of dry that off. Ask the person, did you, you know, do you have pain anywhere else? Did you get cut anywhere else? He says, no, it's just right here. It's just been, I've been holding it. It's been running into my hand. So I put that direct pressure on there. I wait to see if it leaks through. Most venous bleeding will stop with direct pressure unless he has a bleeding disorder or is on blood thinners of some sort for another condition. In this case, he says he's not on any other medications. He's not taking any um, over the, or, uh, you know, behind the counter pills. He's pretty much a healthy guy, so I'm not too worried about it. He's stable, he's pink, he's warm, he's dry. He had no loss of consciousness. There are no other life-threatening conditions. I don't believe I have to call EMS at this point unless we wanted the ambulance to transport him. At this point though, it's not leaking through, so I'm now gonna wrap it with tape. What we're doing is we're basically making our own Band-Aid. It's kind of a hefty Band-Aid at that, but it's still a Band-Aid. It's just there to control the bleeding a little bit and to cover the wound so it doesn't get any dirt or debris in it while we either transport this individual to the med center for stitches or for getting it cleaned out, get his tetanus booster, or until we decide what our next step treatment needs to be. Again, bleeding is under control, patient is stable, it's probably not a 911 call. We can decide to take them in with another coworker safely or whatever the protocol is for the workplace.